Hey what's going on guys this is Tito back with another video and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the Redmi Note 10 Pro's Pixel OS and this update is based on Android 12 of course and this is the 12th March 2022 build and the speciality about this ROM actually this is based on the MIUI 13 for my vendor the latest one. Now why that is important because on the Indian version of the Redmi Note 10 Pro if you flash a uh, OS's vendor based ROM the camera becomes weird like the front camera selfies and stuff comes out to be stretchy and it doesn't simply look good but here this is a MIUI format based ROM and we have the ANX camera version 204 by default present over here and if you are coming from a OSS vendor based ROM make sure to flash the MIUI 13 firmware vendor and I will definitely recommend a clean flash on that and if you don't know how to actually flash this ROM or any ROM particularly on the Redmi Note 10 Pro you can check out the cards or the description. Now of course this is Pixel OS so everything is like a pixel and here the whole experience of this ROM is just amazing. I'll show you the home screen and stuff but this is how the quick setting panel looks like. Let me just go into the about section. Here inside the Android version this is based on Android 12 as you're noticing and you can make this clock to like this 12 o'clock and it will do the Android 12 kind of easter egg stuff. It looks beautiful. We have the security patch as February 5th 2022 not quite March yet and we have the stock kernel as the Ventum kernel plus and here we have the build number again 12th March 2022. In the system panel we do get a system updater and from here you can see the maintainer's name is Aryan and you can check for updates from right here whenever there is a new update and here we have the gestures. Now this ROM does not have much customizations but inside gestures you will find many things like the quick tap and it does work actually if I do this quick tap as you can see it takes screenshot we have the share edit and delete option and if I go into it we have even the other options play music or show recent apps and stuff for this quick tap so that's great we have the toggle torch option and it does work I have seen and we have the quickly open camera with the power button then we have the system navigation gestures in the settings we do not get much things like you cannot actually control the pill bar thickness or the height of it and we have the swipe to invoke assistant and if you swipe from these corners as you can see it does work flawlessly we have the two button and three button navigation as well then we have the one handed mode and it does work properly as you are noticing then we have the press and hold power button for the assistant then the swipe to screenshot is also there and it does work as you can see there is also the capture mode option so if you click on capture mode as you can see you can capture mode area of course if you go into the edit then we have this markup kind of thing from this you can actually mark some stuff if you want to like the pen marker and stuff everything is there you can save and delete from here or you can share it with your friends of course then we have the prevent ringing the double tap to sleep enable advanced restart option is also there then we have the playback control and the adaptive playback so yes the gestures actually has a ton of things inside over here and the gboard is present by default we also have the live translate feature if you want to use that now let me jump back to the home screen this is how it looks like and of course this is a pixel launcher pixel os of course some sub uh, pixel launcher will be present by default and this is the same and to the left side of the home screen we have the google's discover page and swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets up the quick setting panel but let me tell you even in the white theme or the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark like this and here as you can see on the notification panel it is white and here if you are noticing the dark theme is currently disabled even then the quick setting panel stays dark I don't like that very much but yeah this is how it is as of right now and we have more toggles you can edit and add even more toggles if you want to just from here let me show you what toggles we have added over here we have the screen recorder and you can of course record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time then we also have the battery saver and stuff the night light and the dark theme the data saver do not disturb the google home controls and the auto rotate option that's it not much in the power menu we have the advanced reboot option if you click on restart as i have enabled advanced reboot right now you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here that's it for the quick setting panel swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can definitely search for any particular apps just like this and it also shows you the suggestions over here and the widgets like the google's clock widget and stuff of android 12 that is also working fine and if you're noticing the animation it is very bouncy and the whole animation thing is working perfectly great right now let me show you the stock camera if i open it this is the anix camera version 204 that we will get of course by default and to the left side on, on the lenses we get the 0.66 or the ultra wide angle lens then we have the 2x telephoto zooming kind of thing and if i switch the front camera 
if you're noticing everything is working fine with the front camera and stuff even the portrait mode works great only the slow motion is buggy if you switch to the slow-mo as you can see it gets stuck but normal modes are working great even if you switch to the video mode if you're noticing you can get up to 4k 30 fps video shooting option so that's great and if you switch to the pro mode then as you can see you can actually shoot pro video you can change the white balance the shutter speed and the iso etc so this is great and you also have the 4k 30 fps option in pro mode and so if i switch to the normal video mode then the front camera as you can see we have 1080p 30 fps front camera video recording option also we have the super macro lens even with the super macro lens you can shoot 1080p 30 fps video so that's great and it does work as you can see the super macro is working great over here the portrait mode the 64 megapixel mode everything is working fine here no issues with that even the documents the dual video everything is should be working great let me switch to the dual video as you are noticing the dual video is actually working perfectly fine here no issues whatsoever with the dual video mode either now talking about the camera in the snapchat let me actually show you when you are opening the front camera as you can see there is that halo kind of black border over here so it won't give you those halo effects over here and that is actually blocking the light from the screen with that black border and as you are noticing that's a pretty thick black border in my opinion so yeah, you shouldn't be having any issues with the black borders on the front camera on a video call or something. Also, I have installed a Gcam Go that is also working perfectly fine. And with that, let me actually show you, you can take basic pictures and the taking photos and stuff. And as you're noticing, it's very fast and snappy. And even with the ANX camera, if I show you, the picture taking is fast and snappy, no issues whatsoever. Now jumping into the settings, I have to mention one thing after flashing this ROM, which I have noticed, I have a GeoSIM over here and if you're noticing there is no network signal showing up over here. And if I turn off Wi-Fi, just notice it shows a question mark network or internet kind of thing. So yeah, you do not know that you if you have signal of your SIM or not. For that, you have to swipe up again and on this mark, you will see if you have network. This is very weird for a ROM, but once you enable mobile data, this only shows up. But after setting up the ROM, it was not showing LTE plus or something over there as well. So I was very concerned about that. Even mobile data doesn't work. And yes, the normal faulty calling was working, but it wasn't showing anything over there. It was showing that question mark globe kind of thing. So I was very concerned about that. So I had to go into the network, then inside mobile network. Then I just scroll down and inside access point, this was empty. This GeoNet kind of thing was empty. So for that, I just had to click on the three dots, then reset to default. After that, the access point appeared. I did not have to add it manually, but I just had to reset to default. So I have to mention this. I haven't done this in any other ROM, but here I have noticed that and that's just very weird in my opinion. The wall calling and stuff again is working fine. There is no call recording option although, and we have the like Bluetooth and stuff changing option and the call quality via Bluetooth and the phone audio as well was great. And even with speakers, the call quality is, was great. So no issues with Vault calling on this particular ROM. Also talking about Bluetooth, the battery percentage also shows up in the quick setting panel. Bluetooth battery actually shows up. So again, no issues with that. But again, you don't see any kind of Vault logo or something over here. That is very weird. In the settings, we have the notifications and the battery and stuff. In the notifications, we have the app settings and all the Android 12 kind of things like the bubbles. And you can actually set this allow face unlock option. So I'll show you the unlocking things later on. We have the notification dot app icons, enhanced notification, etc. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. We have the battery percentage in bold font and it actually shows a bar like this in Android 12. And inside optimization profiles, we have the thermal profiles over here and you can set per apps thermal profile to whatever you like. Like I have changed this to performance for the Android benchmark and stuff and all other benchmarks I have changed that. I'll show you the benchmarks later on. But talking about the battery percentage and stuff, they are there, but you cannot really change the position of the battery percentage and you cannot really change the icons of the battery over here in the status bar. So that's how it is as of right now. But the battery life over here was great. I have to it with the Aku battery app. Let me actually show you with that. I have got about eight hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. And that's decent in my opinion. Also the screen off, you can see this is the standby in the middle and we have the combined use pretty much. 
So yeah, on uh, average, it will give you eight to nine hours of screen on time. You shouldn't be worrying about the battery life too much over here. But yes, to be frank, in the dark face ROM, I have got better battery than this. That I can pretty much say. Fast charging was working great. No issues whatsoever with the fast charging over here. The 33 watt fast charging is actually working fine here. And if you want to check out the health right now, it shows after all these cycles, it shows that I have 93% of battery health left. So that's good enough, I would say. In the sound and vibration, this is how it looks like. Of course, this is how the volume panel looks like on this ROM. And you can actually expand it just like this. We have the ringtone and stuff changing option. Then if you scroll down more, we have the dial pad tones, the screenshot sound, etc. disabling option. Also, we get the in-call vibration options. If you go into the me sound and answer, we have these preset options. I have been using it with the bass booster. Also, the headphone type, I have been using it with the youth edition. And you can choose between these many headsets. This is actually with the 3.5 headphone jack kind of audio and with that the sound quality via the headphone jack was amazing. You also do have the hi-fi audio option. Then we have a clear speaker option. If your speakers of the device is dusty or something, you can use that. Right now, let me jump into the display settings. We have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness and in here you can enable that. We have the lock screen settings. There is a skip lock screen and stuff then the show device controls. Four small clock is there but I don't know why you would use that. I like the Android 12 bigger clock in the lock screen and double tap to sleep on the lock screen is there. So again, there is no double tap to sleep in the home screen, but there is on the status bar and you can also double tap to wake and even on the lock screen, there is double tap to sleep. Now talking about the always on display, if you want to turn it on, you have to go into this lock screen section, then from here to this ambient display, then from here you have to enable always on. Otherwise there is no option in the quick setting panel to actually enable the always on display. So that's just weird, I feel. But yeah, from here, if you enable always on, this is how it looks like and it works perfectly fine. As you're noticing, even the double tap to wake works great. And this is how the animation works once you unlock. Let me go back. We have the other things like the night light and stuff, the colors, and we have these much color settings. Let me scroll down. We have the smooth display, the show refresh rate, the force 120 hertz refresh rate. I'm really sorry for the background noise, guys. We have the auto do rate screen, the double tap to wake and stuff, the wallpapers and styles. If you go in here, we have the change wallpapers option. So if you go into it, we have these mini wallpapers. These Google wallpapers definitely look good. And you can also use the living universe kind of wallpapers, the live wallpapers. But I would say they might actually bring some lags to your device. So I don't use that. And here we have the accent colors from the wallpapers. Also, you can choose between basic colors. The dark theme is actually working perfectly fine here. If you're noticing the whole background and stuff becomes dark gray. So yeah, this is not pitch black, by the way, this is dark grayish kind of look. Now we have the themed icons and the upgrade kind of customization up to five by five. We can customize it. Let me go back. We have the other things like the security settings. Right now, if you tap on the face unlock, we have this authenticate in apps because there is also app lock. So I have disabled that and I don't actually use the face unlock for the app locks. But yeah, normally you can use that and we have the allow face unlock when the screen actually wakes up or if you want to swipe up only, then only use the face unlock. So yeah, I have been using it with the swiping on the lock screen. Then we have the skip lock screen and you can redo the face scan, of course. And inside fingerprint, I have added two fingerprints. Right now, it's time to show you the locking things. So let me actually show you if I double tap, as you can see, it locks and I have showed you already the fingerprint scanner. But let me show you up close. If I tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see, it just unlocks. This is fairly fast and snappy experience that you will get. So no issues whatsoever with the like fingerprint scanner unlocking speed. But right now, if I tap it, as you can see, it unlocks. And if I show you the animation from here, and once you press the power button, look at the animation. This looks beautiful, right? And again, and right now, let me show you the face unlock speed. So for that, I have to point the device towards my face. I double tap on the lock screen and I have the swipe up to face unlock use kind of thing. So that's why if I swipe up, and as you can see, it unlocks very fast and snappy way. Let me actually show you one more time. As you can see, it brings that black border and I point the device towards my face and it unlocks. So yeah, very fast and snappy, 100% working face unlock and the Figbit scanner both very reliable unlocking experience over here. Now with using the ROM, I would say this security settings kind of updates. That's why you don't see the app lock, but for that you have to go into this advanced settings. Then we have to click on the stock lock options then we will find the app lock and to continue, I have to press the fingerprint scanner or tap it. And here we have the protect the apps. And from right here, you can search any particular app and you can lock them. Like if I search telegram over here, which I have already locked, as you can see, 
and right now if i go back there we have all the other options like the auto lock timeout also we have the collapse notification you can set per app and right now if i show you this is how the locking thing looks like the window and if i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see as soon as i do that it actually unlocks the app and the app lock is working perfectly fine here no issues with that now talking about the ir blaster of the rom and that is actually working fine as you can see i guess so yeah the ir blaster is working perfectly fine here the safety net also passes right out of the box over here so you can use banking apps like google pay without any problems the DRM Info stays as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Talking about the performance of this ROM, overall the performance of this ROM was great for daily driving. The whole UI stays very smooth, and as you can see it's teleporting 120 FPS. So even if you want to play games and stuff, it should be fine. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular ROM build. So overall my experience with the Pixel OS has been great if you like a minimalistic stock Android-ish ROM. This is one of the best options for you. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know about this Pixel OS on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.